you need? Everybody? Not quite everybody? So those of you who didn't raise your hand, you need more than this one? Or you have enough and you're just here because you love to learn? One more? Are you doing design reviews? Yeah. No, it's an easy way to get one. It's a good idea. So why, why did you wait so long to get all your lecture credits? Did you get to any skill sessions? One. One. Okay. So those are probably better than lecture, really, for learning something useful. So you should probably try and catch those if you can. Not that this isn't useful, too. I recognize most of you. Are any of you new to professional development series of lectures we're doing? A couple of you? No? Yeah. Okay. So uh, we'll assume by this point in time that you know the engineering design process, because that's what the other six lectures we've talked about have been. Um, and this is kind of the last one, or this is the last EPICS lecture. So we're in the last week of EPICS really now. Next week's design reviews. Everybody. Got your projects done? You ready to show them off? No? You so team guys should be, right? Yeah. You guys are done. Yeah? yeah? Nice. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I, I've got to get out of here as quick as I can after lecture, so I'm going to try and wrap up a little bit early. I have to go to a funeral. Um, so I'll try and be brief, uh, but teach you a little bit about product testing. Okay. So we'll go ahead and get started people straggle on that can catch up. So um, we're talking about two things when we talk about uh, pro product testing. Uh, verification and validation, two forms of testing. So the two Vs we've got up here. I'm going to do several slides talking about what those are and what the difference between them are. H have any of you heard of those two terms before? No? Is this brand new? Good. Okay. So I'll try and beat it to death so you get the difference. It's an important concept. So today, verification and validation. And then we're going to talk about how to write a test report and how to write a test protocol. Um, I'll just go over those kind of briefly so you understand generally what goes into them. And then also, how do I know what I should be testing? So I need to run some tests. What are those tests? What should I do? So um, going into verification and validation, um, the, the traditional questions that you're taught to ask in verification and validation are, did we make the right thing and did we make it right? Okay. So validation is, did we make the right thing? So we had some user who had some need. Did we make something that met their needs? And then we had, did we make it right? That is, I was supposed to be making you know, a car of a certain type. Did I make that car properly? Did we do it the right way? So did I design it correctly? So if we, look at, if we think about the engineering design process, validation is that thing that maps back to your user needs. It's, did we make the right product? Okay. And then verification maps back to your specifications. All right, so we had a specification that said it should withstand 300 pounds. Can it do it? So that's the difference. I'll, I'll go through this a couple of different ways. So user need says a product should do something, right? We all remember the user needs. Um, so validation says, yes, it does that thing, or no, it doesn't. <coughs> so that's the test that you're going to run. So you're wanting to look for some kind of test that will discern whether or not that user need has been met. And then verification says, my product should meet some criteria. So this was those engineering specifications that you put to that user need. So we said it needs to be, it needs to last for 100 years. And we said to last 100 years, it needs to withstand you know, 700 pounds at 10 million cycles. That's the verification test that we're going to run. Does that kind of make sense to everybody what the difference is between verification and validation? OK. So in, in product development, there's really three forms of testing you do. There's the kind of ad hoc testing you do while you're doing design. So that's when you're building a circuit and you, you know, hook the thing up to an oscilloscope and you're trying to see, am I getting the right output? But that's not really a formal test. You're just debugging as you work. And you'll do the same thing in mechanical design, right? So you'll make a part and you'll just kind of, you know, is this about right? And, and do those kind of quick tests. But when you want to do a formal test where you're really looking at, do I pass this criteria? And that's verification, OK? So that's, th that's the difference you'll get into there. So if we map this out, so this, this graph comes from the FDA. So most of you that know me know I come from medical device background. So it has up here as a medical device. But you can substitute for that any device, any service that you might do, any kind of program that you might have that you are designing, anything that can be designed, really. Okay. 
So if we walk through from the top left, my laser pointer isn't worth anything, but um, if we look up here, we have user needs at the top left, and then design inputs as the next box as we go down. So that design inputs is another way of saying specifications, okay? Similar concept. So we have our user needs, and then we make our specifications, and then we do our design process. So this is kind of like in the EPICS process, the conceptual design. And then we do design outputs, which we talked about last week as the output of detailed design, right? So we go through and do detailed design, and we create prints or schematics. We might create bill materials and routings, these kind of things. That's what comes out of of uh, our design process, and then we finally have our, our finished device. So verification takes the design outputs, or those prints, the routers, all those kind of things that you made that embody what your device is, and they try and check to see if they met those design inputs or specifications that you had, okay? So just saying the same thing, but showing it to you in another way, so you try and understand how, th this is really how you complete the circle on the design cycle, okay? So this is how you as an engineer say, I know for sure that my user needs were met. And I know for sure that my specifications were met because I went and performed this testing. Does that, does everybody follow that, that tra train of thought? So when you wanna know what it is that you need to test on your device, what test should I run? You, all you need to do is look back at your user needs and say, how do I test to know that I accomplished that user need? Right, so one of our first lectures, we talked about uh, designing a kite. So one of our user needs was the kite needs to fly, right? So you could go out and write a validation test that says a user should go out to a public park and hold it up, and if we do that nine times out of ten, it should fly. All right, so that's a validation test. We're looking at function. How does the thing perform? Where the verification test on that kite was, we said it should weigh less than a pound, and we put it on a scale and weigh it. Does that make sense to everybody, the difference between verification and validation? Okay. It's an important concept, and as you get into testing, um, you'll need to talk a lot about what kind of test you're running at any given time. Um, looking at a, a bit of a cartoon of this same idea, and they've put it in terms a little bit different, but really trying to bring home the communication aspect of this. So a lot of the times, the person who gathered your user needs isn't the person who's doing design, and they're not the person who's doing testing, and the person who designed isn't doing the testing. So there's a lot of disconnects because when you have a large project, you're working with a big team. In Epics, you guys work with a big team. And when you're designing, you might not be the project partner liaison. So you may have miscommunicated what it was that your partner needed. So this is kind of talking about that. So marketing requested it is kind of like your user needs, right? So whoever was in charge of getting user needs said we need this three-tier swing. And then you know somebody ordered it wrong, and then you guys designed it wrong because you didn't communicate what it was that they wanted. And you can see it just goes on and on. And what the customer really wanted was just a tire swing. So it was that lack of communication because they didn't say, I want a tire swing. They said, I wanted a swing that hung from a tree and it got put together wrong, see? So please do <coughs> emphasize teamwork as you go through this process to make sure that when you, write, when you write your user needs and specifications, other people may design the thing that meets those user needs and specifications. And if you wrote them poorly, they don't know what you meant. So it, just bring home the importance of writing those because when you go to do your testing, your verification validation, you're testing back to those spe specs you wrote and if they're wrong, you can run the right tests and validate the, the product but have the wrong intelligence that led behind it. That makes sense to everybody? This is an old cartoon, there's a lot of new versions of this but I think this is the original one from the 70s so um, I, I like S-Field service installed it the best. I would like to see that swing up there with <laughs> two sticks holding up the whole tree. All right, did I go too far? No. Okay, so just some more examples, verification versus validation. So verification tests are things like unit tests in your code, okay? So if you're a software engineer and you write a function, you say I'm gonna have some input and some output to my function. So say it's supposed to divide two numbers. You'll have two inputs, you know, input A and input B, and inside your function you're gonna do A over B. And you should have some error handling if B is zero, for instance, or if it's an irrational number. Um, so those kind of things are unit tests. So you can look and say, I have this big software project, but this one little function, I want to check it and make sure it works properly. So that's a verification test. And then all those kind of bench mechanical tests, these are just examples. There are a lot of different forms of 
verification tests, but just give you a flavor of these. So like a tensile test. So you might take a, a mechanical specimen and pull it apart until it breaks. Okay. So you're just verifying that the strength is what you thought it was on that part. Does that make sense? So validation, on the other hand, are things like user testing. So we talked about doing, in user needs, we talked about doing surveys. We talked about doing interviews, these types of things. Does everybody remember that? So when we do that, you can come back around full circle at the end of your design phase and say, when we interviewed you at the beginning, you wanted you know, <coughs> these several user needs, what we extracted from our interview. This is what we designed. Did it meet your user needs? Okay. Or you may just observe them and try and get the same information. So if you're going to do those kind of tests, go back and, and review that lecture we did on user <coughs> needs, and all those same principles apply. Okay. Uh, so some other ones, simulated use, performance testing. So sometimes in like simulated use, you, it's really difficult to do an, the actual test you need to do. We'll talk about that in a few slides. Um, but simulated use is one way to get around that. So if you're working, say, in the human body, you might not want to just go run a test, so you may run a simulation instead. Um, Performance test would be another good example of that. So when we talk about, say, performance of an automobile, right? So you're saying you want to have some certain amount of horsepower and you want to go from zero to 60 in some, some session, you may do a performance test to validate that that happened. This is cut off a bit. Um, so I want to do an exercise real fast, just to make sure everybody gets this. Um, we'll take a few minutes and I want you to write one user need and validation pair, okay? And this could be for your, uh, actually what we'll do it for uh, forgot because my guy's cut off here. So does anybody recognize this little character coming off the side? This is a new movie that's out right now. I took my kids to see it last week. So this guy is Baymax, and he is a robot that is supposed to be in charge of your health care. So if you say Al, he will spring forth and say, I've detected distress sound. What can I do to assist you? And he will not go back until you're healthy. Okay, so he's a health care robot. It's a very engineering-centric movie. It's kind of funny. Uh, <laughs> But so, so for a healthcare robot, I want you to come up with one user need validation pair and one specification verification pair, okay? I will give you a few minutes to do that, come up with some user need, validate it, and some uh, specification to that user need and verify it. And then after a few minutes, we'll partner up and criticize each other, okay? Go. pencil. Get it up here. Okay. You're alright. As long as you're deep in thought. As long as it's in your brain, it'll work. You guys coming up with something? What's your user need? Mm, I was going to say like that I to be able to like put a band-aid on kids, a child's face that's bleeding. That's a good one. Come up with anything? Healthcare robot, what's he gonna do? Try to think. Should be a bunch of them, right? Yeah, I mean, I can think of a bunch of general stuff, but. It's okay. It's all right. Get it? Okay. Okay. What are you guys doing? Come up with something? Got a user need? Uh, yeah. Yeah? Okay. You guys staying warm and cozy back here? Just goofing off. What user need you come up with? Did you do the same one? Mm -mm. No? no. What'd you get? I uh, should be able to treat wounds. Okay. What was your specification for that? There's a lot of specification on that. Like uh, maybe healing time after treatment. That's a good one.
All right, does everybody come up with a user need and how to validate it? A concept for a test, validation test, and a specification for that user need. So if any of you don't remember, you should by now. We've talked about it for seven weeks. Sp uh, specification is a quantitative assessment of that user need, right? So if the user need is it should be strong, quantitative should say it should last a number of cycles, right? Everybody come up with some kind of specification, some kind of a test for that specification? No, yes, dead faces. All right, everybody's just thinking about their finals? Just thinking about going to the cactus on Thursday or what? Okay. All right, so go ahead and partner up with somebody close to you and then just share what your user need, validation, specification, verification, pair order, and then try and give each other suggestions for how maybe you could make, you know, that, how could you make that specification more quantitative? How can you make it more specific and exact and measurable? And then talk about your test, whether or not your test would give you a yes or no answer. Okay. Go. Should be talking. If you're, a, if you're in an odd pair, just join up with another group and be a group of three. Come up with. I, I wasn't really sure how to do this. So I just put um, no people's past problems. Yeah, that's what I was like, doing. Have a yeah, file yeah. showing the person's yeah. history. Yeah. And you, have to do you could test it by figuring out their allergies to certain foods. I don't know. I don't think I did it right. But. No, that's all right. <laughs> All right, did everybody get a chance to discuss? Yeah? So who, who, who had a partner with a really great user need? Anybody? Anybody get a really good one? Nobody liked their partner enough to admit it? All right, right here in the headband, what was the user need? Um, he had quick response time in case of emergencies. That's an excellent user need. And what was the test you would have to validate that user need? So you're going like to okay, so create an emergency situation by s injuring somebody? <laughs> okay, simulation? Yeah. Okay, that's a good idea. I would probably simulate that rather than do the real thing. Do you might have a really good specification? Anybody's partner have a good specification? How about right here in the sweater? What was your partner's specification? Okay, so, so what user need was that specifying? Okay, so it needs to fix injuries. Specification is like how, completely how completely does it? Okay, so how completely does it need to be? All the way? <laughs> okay, <laughs> so 100% uh, healing on the healing scale? Okay, that could, there could be a scale associated with that, right? I'll, I'll buy that. So we've created a scale called the uh, Purdue healing scale, and you need to achieve a 100% heal rating. Okay, 
So by that, um, and then you, how are you testing that specification? What is your verification? Uh, how do I know I achieved 100% heal? Well, but I need to specify, I'm designing the robot, right? So we need, to, we need to have a test to say, robot says it's 100% healed, is it? Right. So maybe, maybe you have a board of physicians that you get together, right? And, and you have them assess the scale, right? And then you compare what the robot scale is compared to that board of physicians. And you say, that's an expert panel, right? That's the, that's the benchmark of care now. And that's how you could do it, right? So you can be creative when you come up with these tests because sometimes your user needs or your, or your specifications won't give you a really exact test, okay? So the really easy examples are mechanical ones for the most part because it's really easy to be like, I build a bridge. It should be able to be completely full of semi-trucks full of you know, milk or something and it doesn't fall down. And then I can do calculation to figure that out. But when my user need is softer, right, it can become <coughs> difficult to do that. So you're, you're perfectly allowed to be creative, and that's why when we talked about in user needs, um, we talked about how to do those kind of interviews and, and uh, uh, surveys, those type of things, okay? Because those are perfectly valid ways to test. So you can ask your user if that's all right, okay? Very good. So if you guys haven't seen that movie, go see it. It's pretty good. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about test protocols and reports and what goes in them and what they're for. So test protocol, I'm kind of using in two ways. So I talk about the test protocol document, which you write, and then the actual protocol. And that's the steps that you're going to follow, right? So the steps that you're going to follow to do a test um, are a lot like the steps in a recipe when you write them, OK? So if, have any of you ever cooked anything from a recipe? Most of you have probably seen one at some point in time in your life, except for you. You've never made anything from a recipe. OK, so it'll tell you, you know, mix three eggs with one cup of flour with a whisk. And it'll give you very specific instructions on how to do it, okay? The only things that it will omit are things that are commonly known, all right? Same thing with your test reports. So I give a bad, better example, because this better example isn't necessarily good, but it's better than the bad example. So the bad example is, I have some device and I'm going to check to see if it will break when it's bent. That's a bad protocol, right? Because I could Bend could mean a lot of different things. How much am I bending it? How far am I bending it? What force am I using to bend it? So that could mean a lot of different things. A better example might be to say, fixture that part three inches from the end of the handle, and then 12 inches from the end, I'm going to apply a load with a servo hydraulic frame of you know, some number of pounds and some number of cycles. So I'm giving some specific instructions on how to go about doing this. So you can get even better if you can specify exactly what type of machine to use, you know, which machine to use. So if I'm baking this pumpkin pie and I develop it in uh, you know, one certain type of oven and use a different type, you might get a different result. Okay? So the best you can do is to specify everything completely. Okay? So try and be as exact as possible. I um, thought you guys might like a picture of pumpkin pie after Thanksgiving. Uh, <laughs> so th the other piece of this um, is an acceptance criteria, okay? So you're going to write, here's what I want this test to do in order to determine whether or not I'm meeting my, my um, specification, okay? So I'm writing the test to see if I've got a yes or no on my specification. And my acceptance criteria is simply that question which you ask yourself to get to that yes or no answer. So a bad example would be it passes the test if it doesn't break. Well, that could mean a lot of different things. What does it exactly mean to break something, right? So what if I took a spoon and I said I should be able to, you know, pick up a piece of Chicago deep dish pizza with the spoon without it breaking, and it bends. Is that bend breaking? It didn't snap in half, right? So be more specific. So maybe a better example would be to say it'll be accepted if no yield is observed under some number of pounds, okay? So for those of you who haven't taken strength of material yet, that's basically where you bend something until it doesn't snap back on its own, okay? So uh, the more specific you can be with your acceptance criteria, the better off you'll be as well. So if we look at kind of a generic example of a test report, you should have the name of the product, <coughs> you should have the name of the test, so what kind of test am I running? Right? So this is a yield strength test, or it's a hardness test, or I'm testing you know, a function. But I'm going to document what I'm doing, and I'm going to tell you um, if it's verification or validation, so that I can keep track, and when I go through and I write my specification user need document, I can 
map all of those back and make sure that I satisfied all of them. And then you're going to write a few things that are exactly like if any of you have written a scientific paper, like a scientific article or ever read one. Or if you've written any kind of tech technical document, you usually have a background section. And the point of that is to explain why you're doing what you're doing. Because telling, you, telling someone what you did only tells them part of the story. They need to know why. Because 10 years from now, that thing you're making may have changed, or technology might have changed, and why you did it might not make sense anymore. So they may not want to repeat and do the same thing that you did. Okay? Or maybe they don't understand why you did what you did because they're less experienced with the product. So it's important to give, give a background, tell someone why. Explain the materials that you used. So in your recipe, this is the list of ingredients. So uh, what are the materials you used? What type of test equipment did you use? How many pieces did you use? So most of the time in epics, we test one at most. And we usually don't do any destructive testing because you guys hand built that one. And you don't want to destroy it to find out if it's strong enough because you need to build another one. But uh, most of the time in industry, you'll destroy a bunch of stuff to test to see how much it can take. Okay? So your skateboard, when they designed that, somebody broke a bunch of those to see if it would handle the rigors of being a skateboard. Okay? Um, then you're going to put in your methods. That's that list of things in the recipe, the steps. Okay? So that's how to do exactly what you want someone to do. And as a design engineer, this is how you control things. Because a lot of times you won't run the test, but you want people to test it exactly the way you want it tested because you know more about that product than anybody, right? So you want control. So you want to tell people how to do it, and then you write in that acceptance criteria. So this is basically what goes in a test protocol. So as you guys test when he drops his phone on the ground, if it's going to break, <laughs> you're going to write these kind of things down. You usually want to sign it at the bottom and date it so that you know when and where it came from so that when the <coughs> test is run, you have a line in the sand that said, this is what we're going to do and why we're going to do it and how it's going to be done. Okay? So from a test protocol, you'll go into a test report. A test report, I recommend you just take your test protocol document and you rename it test report. And that's where you start. And you leave everything at the top alone, except for you write <laughs> report instead of protocol. You leave the background exactly as it was unless something new has occurred. You have your materials, but what you're going to talk about here is what changed. Okay? So what I intended to do was to run a test like this with this stuff. But what I found out was that machine was broken. I couldn't use it. It was too expensive to make seven pieces, so we did five. Something will change along the course of the thing. And you need to explain why it's still OK, why this test is still valid. And then you're going to do the same thing with your methods. Okay? So you fix something up in the test machine, and you found that you know, the fixture got in the way, and you couldn't fix it in the way you wanted to. So instead of testing it 12 inches from the base, you were doing it 14. Right? So you need to explain why that's still OK, what adjustments you're making to the calculation to figure out whether or not you passed your specification still. Okay? Does that make sense to everybody? So it's OK that things change and don't go to plan, as long as you determine if it's still OK. Does it still meet all the criteria that you had? Um, and explain what happened so that you can understand it later. Um, and then you're going to write in your results. Your results are simply your data. So you did a test. You observed something. You measured something. You got some kind of data. You took pictures. Drop all that in there. It doesn't have to be real eloquent. Just make sure you get all of that information included there. So <coughs> graphs, pictures, data of all sorts go there. And then conclusions is where you're going to say what happened. So you're going to talk about your data, interpret your data. And then you're going to make sure you have one sentence, very clear, it should be a paragraph by itself, that says, this did or did not meet my acceptance criteria. So that if somebody stupid reads this, they can at least go to the conclusions and see that it says, this test passed. All right, we got an A. Good. So make sure that you include that in your test reports. The test reports that you will write in epics, if you write any, will be just like the test reports that you write throughout your careers. It's the same format. There may be fancier letter heading that you put them on, but it's the same thing. So I'm going to talk a little bit about a couple of alternative testing methods or things that you can do um, short of testing your whole product that will make your life a little bit easier. So the first one are unit and analog tests. So people in software are very familiar with unit tests because you test a function. Like I talked about the division function a minute ago. I know I have inputs and outputs. I'm just looking at just that one function or just that one piece of code. Okay? And all I want to know is, does that piece work? I don't care if the whole system works. You can do the same thing with mechanical systems. right? 
So if you're designing a new car and you're wanting to test the brakes, it wouldn't be very efficient to build a whole car and put brakes on it to test the brakes, right? You want to know if the brakes work a lot sooner than that. So you're going to design a test to just test the brakes alone with none of those other components involved. So you're going to isolate just what you're looking at. And even within one device, sometimes you'll do this. So um, my previous job, I was designing a, a tibial template for a knee, OK? So uh, this is uh, your tibia looking at if this is, I'm standing this way, OK? So the surgeon will, will make a cut across the top of the tibia, and he'll put a flat plate on the top, and there's a hole in that plate. And they'll drop a rod down through it, and they will look to see if the cut that they made is flat. Right, so is it perpendicular to the top of the to the length of the knee? There's a whole bunch of stuff that goes on in the part of it right here with complex geometry. Okay, because there's a lot of different pieces that attach into this to make cuts after this. But what all we were really interested in is does that line give us a straight line? Right, we wanted to know if we were within a degree. So we, you know, built instead of building this plate with all that complex geometry, we just built a <coughs> flat plate with a hole, and you can test it that way. Okay. So that's an analog test. So that's where you say, I have something complex. I'm going to pull out the simple thing I'm interested in and just make that, instead of taking all the time and effort to build the complex part. Does that make sense to everybody? So a lot of the time, you don't want to go through the cost and time to build a complex part when you're only interested in a simple effect of that part. And you can get that through an analog. So, I go, so say you're designing one mechanism. So you're wanting two pieces to snap together and everything else that goes on with those two pieces isn't of interest to your test. You wouldn't build those two pieces just to test that. You'd just build the two snaps that go together. Is that clear? So that's an analog. Okay? So unit testing and analog testing are very smart things to do. It's very efficient compared to building an entire system and then trying to run tests on it. Because most of the time, you'll break things when you test them. And so you don't want to break you know, a $20,000 assembly when you are interested in a $5 part. So that's a couple of good things to keep in mind. Um, another one is simulation. So uh, sometimes, I, I talked about running simulation tests. Sometimes it's really difficult to test in a real environment. Okay? So some of the ways you can think about are, uh, you know, if you're testing an automobile, it takes a lot of money and time to build a prototype. So you may want to run simulations before you build the whole thing so you can make changes to the system before you've built anything or put in the time to engineer everything. Um, it, so that's you know, very expensive, slow production. Other, other ones may be the environment is difficult to test. So um, arterial stents, they do a lot of simulations on these because it's really hard to replicate an artery in a mechanical test. So they try, but an artery is uh, very flexible and dynamic. It's really hard to replicate that. So they do a lot of simulation simply because they can't do a physical test. Okay, so simulation becomes important. Simulations have been done since math existed. You build a model and you do some simulation, but they were really difficult to do uh, until more modern days where we have computer technology. So things like a finite element analysis is a mechanical way to do a simulation. So on a computer, you build your system with 3D geometry or 2D geometry, and you can apply all the loads and stresses and things just like you would in a mechanical test, but on a simulation. You can do that with fluids. You can do it with <laughs> heat transfer, things like that. Okay, so there are a lot of different things you can do with it. You can do similar tests with circuits. I don't know how to do them, uh, but somebody does. You can find some of the TAs that does uh, that kind of thing. Um, but I would caution you to um, be careful interpreting your results with those. So a lot of the times, it will give you um, irregularities in geometry or in the model. Uh, and give you strange results. So make sure that you validate those models as well. Okay? So don't just build a model and assume it's right. So while this is a validation test, you have to validate the test as well. Okay? So make sure that you compare these back to real data before you put a lot of faith in them. All right. Well, I won't keep it for more than an hour or so, if you've given me your undivided attention. We've installed some rather interesting modifications. You see this arm here? 
Open the top and inside are your defense mechanism controls. Smoke screen, oil slick, rear bulletproof screen, and left and right front wing machine guns. Now this one I'm particularly keen about. You see the gear lever here? Now if you take the top off, you'll find a little red button. Whatever you do, don't touch it. No, why not? Because you release this section of the roof and engage and fire the passenger ejector seat. Whoosh. Ejector seat, you're joking. I never joke about my web 007. All right. <coughs> so we're going to do a little bit of an exercise here, and then I'll let you guys go a bit early. Um, so what I want you to do is choose a James Bond gadget, either one from this video or one from another movie you've seen, or make something up, some kind of a secret agent gadget. I want you to write two user needs and validation tests, two specs for one of those um, user needs, and choose one of them and write a test protocol. Okay? So similar to what you did with the robot before, uh, but this time take it a step further. Think through that test enough where you could write a test protocol. So remember the basic categories in the protocol are background, uh, materials, methods, and acceptance criteria. Okay? <coughs> Go. You got that test protocol written in your head? <laughs> How's it going? Good. Got a couple user needs? Good. Sarah, how's it going? Coming along? On specs. That's good. But you, how's it going? Good. If anybody has any questions or gets hung up, confused, just raise your hand or yell at me. Can help you. OK. 
Come on. What's your gadget? You gotta be quick to use that though. Like bullets, but I can't pay for lunch. Uh, yeah. It's going. Did you come up with a gadget? What? Did you come up with a gadget? Yes. What's your gadget? Bug, de bug detector. Or bug detector. Bug detector? Yeah. Cool. I like to just show it like a graph or is there a standard? A graph? Yeah. You don't shouldn't need a graph. Uh, no. So you'll just write in the protocol, you'll just write why you're doing the test, mm -hmm. then what you're gonna use to do the test, mm -hmm. what the steps will be. I I mean in terms of the steps, do we do like show like a diagram for that? You don't need a diagram, just write you know, <coughs> attach it to this and okay. you know, yeah. Did you guys come up with a cool device? Yeah, what are you doing? Razor hat. A razor hat? Yes. Wait. <coughs> the pen should be turned glass to dark. Turn glass to dark. Everybody's being creative with their devices. That's good. It's half the battle. What, what device are you doing? Poison dart. Poison dart? With a pen. Yeah. Did you come up with some user needs? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mud and snake and a person carrying it won't go off. How's it going? You just doing it all up here? Are you writing it down there? Yeah. yeah. Gotta have a big phone to do that. <coughs> How's it going? It's good. Good? Did you come up with a cool device? Yeah. Laser watch? I actually have a laser watch. Everybody started writing their protocol. If you haven't, you might pick a spec you've got and start writing down your protocol. All right, so just stop where you're at, P get back with your partners from before, just tell each other what you come up with in terms of user needs and specs. As, you, as your partner's telling you about what they came up with, with their <coughs> user needs, think through, is it really a true user need or is it a specification? Mm -hmm. So is it really something, one of the broad features of the product? Okay. Specifications, you should be asking them, is this something that has a yes or no answer? Is it quantifiable? Right. So is this something that is a true engineering spec? And then your verification validation, make sure that those tests make sense toward the appropriate verification validation. Okay, good. And then you can talk about your reports just a bit. Um, and just look for, is the acceptance criteria 
pertain back to the specification that it came from, right? Okay, go ahead. Mechanical and electrical, that's good. Yep. Cool. <laughs> what do you guys come up with? Anything good? Uh, cool. I came up with the uh, ejection seat. Ejection so, seat? Yeah. So the user needs two important ones would be quick release time and uh, safety for of the person uh, after being ejected. Well, it depends what you're using it for, right? Yeah. If you're trying to shoot a bad guy out. Yeah. You don't want them to be safe? <laughs> generally, it's an yeah. emergency seat, sure. so I'd say. <laughs> it is the passenger seat, though. Yeah, yeah that's good. Oh, it's the passenger seat or the driver seat? It should be the driver Was seat. it the driver? I yeah, thought it was, I thought it was the passenger I think it was the, the, video, is the, passenger the video is the passenger seat. Oh. If somebody was in your car, you could shoot them out. Yeah. <laughs> um, I cool. use the handgun that recognizes handprint. Uh -huh. Very good. Good, good. Did you guys say anything cool? He, he got a, did a motorcycle. Yeah. Motorcycle? Yeah. What were, what were your user needs? Uh, one was that you should be able to go fast. <laughs> so my specification was 200 miles per hour. Minimum. <laughs> sure. Of course, of course. And then another one was like multi-terrain. Awesome. How are you gonna How are you gonna test when you're? Uh, the speed was taken to the track and the water was <coughs> taken to the lake. Just, just dump it, it in. <laughs> nice. What did you guys do? Ejection seat. Um, I did the machine gun. Machine gun. Yeah. How are you testing the machine gun? Huh? What are you testing? I was testing if it could fire 22 gauge bullets. How are you testing it? Put a 22 gauge bullet in it and pull the trigger. It's pretty straightforward. Machine gun that's going to attach. You gotta, in you gotta like when you write a spec enough that it's straightforward to test. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. Do you guys come up with anything good? Yeah, I wrote some stuff down. Yeah. Um, it was a grappling hook, not very original, but. That's cool. Thinking about a bulletproof vest or something. Bulletproof vest. So what, what were you testing? I'm just testing for the speed and how much weight the hook can handle. Okay. Because I'm gonna use it for like multiple reasons if I have one. Yeah. yeah, we climb up buildings and yeah. stuff. Yeah, why wouldn't you? Yeah. 
You just climb up the side of something just yeah. for fun? Cool. Very good. All right. Well, it looks like everybody's winding down. Did that uh, help elucidate the difference between verification and validation for everybody? Get clear. If you had to write a test report, you generally know what to put in it. Know how to be succinct and get it done. Okay, good. Acceptance criteria makes sense for everybody. It's a pretty straightforward concept. Good. All right. Well, this is the last lecture of the year. Does anyone have any questions left on your mind at all about anything? No? Excellent. All right. Well, have a good day.